What's up, Internet? If it were up to me, I would never leave this room because this room has my desktop and with my desktop, I can do everything I need to do in life. Unfortunately, my life forces me away from my desktop, whether it's checking up on the shop or bringing my kid to school. I've been finding myself AFK more and more recently. But my workload hasn't changed. I still need to edit videos. And what's the best way to do that on the go? We're tackling that in today's video. But as bonus information, the cheapest way to activate Windows is this. So waka na ba sa unactivated Windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang ang order. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes na sindiki ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sudden depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com so we're trying to find the best way to edit videos on the go. We're talking about 4K, full-length YouTube videos, not shorts or TikToks or these short-form content. The usual length of YouTube videos. We'll be going through an iPad, a regular work laptop, and a laptop specifically designed for editing. The software we'll be using is DaVinci Resolve because that's what I use for editing. Apologies to Premiere fans, but I really, really dislike Adobe. And footage to be edited is in 4K, either shot with a Sony ZV-E10 or a Fujifilm XS10. First, the iPad. Hindi ba imba to set a tablet against regular laptops? Not at all, because these tablets use Apple's M chips, whether M1 or M2. And these chips were specifically designed by Apple, allowing them to have much better performance. Basically, it's a consequence of native software running better on native hardware. Now, we used an iPad with an M1 chip for this video because we are poor and don't have access to an iPad with an M2 chip. But even just with an M1, the performance of DaVinci Resolve was shockingly good. Scrubbing through your video, which editors do a lot because you need to jump from one point to another, or even with just rough edits where you're trying to cut out the ums and the loud noises, scrub through was very smooth. I couldn't believe that we were doing this on a tablet. The downside wasn't with the performance of the tablet, but with the inherent limitations of the tablet format itself. For serious editing, keyboard and mouse are a lot faster than touch and stylus. Also, if you want to do a full edit, you need to put so many other things, whether it's your music files, your image files, custom transitions. You need to have a folder structure in place, which is difficult to accomplish in the UI of a tablet. And I haven't even mentioned getting more B-roll in with your primary A-roll. There are a lot of other files you need to draw on while editing, and the iPad just isn't set up to help you navigate those so, so many files through so, so many folders. Iba pa rin yung desktop, especially if you have multiple monitors to work with. Hell, sa iPad, even just tracking down one file can be an exercise in frustration. So an M1 or M2 chip iPad is surprisingly good for editing. Hindi lang siya hype, it's actually useful. That said, I would only use it for rough edits. That first pass where you remove ums, pauses, mispronunciations, wrong specs mentioned, or yung ingay ni Mamang Sorbetero na dumadaan, nagtitinda ng selecta. Next up, a regular work laptop. Meant for work such as typing and surfing, but not handling these large video files, certainly not editing them. Yung inisip pa na use case para dito, bumili ka ng laptop for work, and either kuripot ka, so ayaw mo mang gastos para sa mas mahal na editing laptop talaga, or kapos talaga sa budget, hindi kaya yung mas mahal na laptop. So this is a make-do-with-what-you-have approach, and that's the approach I took. 
I recently reviewed my work laptop, the ASUS S14 Flip OLED. I am super happy with it, but it wasn't meant for video editing. It's definitely a mid-range laptop. And is it unfair to ask it to do this much? Before I tried video, I did try editing audio and a bunch of our podcast episodes were recorded and fully edited using the S14 Flip. With audio, it's no problem, especially for kind of amateurish production values like what we have for Tech Show But Friendly. But basic editing, stitching together sound, recording the sound, the laptop, even though I didn't buy it for that purpose, served me well. The laptop struggled with video though. Basic playback was rough, even when I lowered the proxy quality of my timeline. I could still do a basic run through, but performance was barely sufficient. And this was just the rough first edit. Wala pang text, wala pang B roll, wala pang iba ibang layers or masks that even relatively simple videos like what we do for YouTube usually require. Editing for any length of time due to the sluggishness of the system and the overall limited capabilities of the format, a computer on your lap with a small screen became downright physically painful after a while. Again, this is not the fault of the laptop as I'm trying to make it do things well outside of its usual expected scope of performance. So I can do rough edits with my S14 Flip OLED, but it is no substitute at all for my usual desktop editing rig. And with that, enter our last contender, the ASUS ProArt StudioBook 16 OLED. ASUS kindly lent us this laptop when we asked if we could borrow a serious laptop, the one that professional editors use and look for. And it did not disappoint. Grab it for editing. Playback was smooth, cuts were instantaneous, jumbling around the clips, it just handled everything so quickly. Any kind of cut or edit you'd want to do, it would execute without any lag. And amazingly, in terms of smoothness, it performed even better than my usual desktop. Crazy! Superlative experience with this laptop and of course, the gorgeous screen just is the cherry on top. Of course, it's OLED, the colors are vibrant, everything just pops with this screen. So much so that it may be a shame that we don't really color correct or at least I don't color correct my videos. The StudioBook 16 is a legitimate desktop replacement. Especially if you hook it up to multiple monitors. The performance is there, the Windows UI is there to handle multiple files and folders. Yung kulang na lang, padagdag ng screen, kasi the OLED is nice, but it is just one screen. But this laptop, plus maybe two or more monitors or so, with a mouse, that's a perfect setup right there for editing. No desktop required anymore. Although it does beg the question, if you're editing on the go, where you would mount those multiple monitors, but that's a weird question for another time. And to be honest, I didn't think any portable device could supplant my desktop. My desktop is not the highest end, but it's still pretty beefy. But the StudioBook 16 editing on it, an layo ng difference. The crispness, the smoothness, the laptop had it for editing. The StudioBook is hefty though, both in terms of its physical weight and its figurative weight. Mahal siya. And it's far and away the most expensive of the devices that we tried. And that's really the long and short of this video. Sa desktops kasi, may paraan para gumaan yung budget. There are ways to zoom in on what you need the PC for and design your computer around that. There's less of an adaptability, you have less leeway with mobile devices. There are some pwede na solutions to video editing on the go which are moderately priced but come with some clear limitations. You might be able to live with those limitations as long as you can get back regularly to your desktop. But if you're looking to exclusively edit on a portable device, the good news is that there are machines hefty enough for you to do that. But the price of entry is quite high. The bad news is, those machines will cost you a pretty penny. Thanks for watching. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted, yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang hardware sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. 
Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up to date yung inventory dun. Kung in stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.